who will be the next member of the 2024 class to commit to Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Today's show brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. Thank you to LinkedIn for being the college football recruiting sponsor throughout the Locked On Podcast Network. And that means it's a little Cruton Thursday with our guy, John Garcia, recruiting expert here. And let's just let's just jump out of the gates with this, John Garcia. <laughs> Who's the next member of Auburn's 2024 class? Who will be the next person to commit to Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers? If we're going low-hanging fruit, Zach, you got to go with Jamarian Burnett. Um, in-stater, longtime priority of Cadillac yeah. Williams, and tangibly – has said, hey, I'm committing soon. How soon? We've been wondering for weeks and maybe months. Right. At this point, he's still getting offers. I think Ole Miss just offered him 24 hours ago. So we'll, we'll see how he uh, inherits that and, and, and absorbs that. But really, this has been kind of Auburn's race to lose for some time. And he has said that he's willing to jump on board pretty early uh, with that familiarity there uh, at AU. So we know Auburn's going to probably bring in multiple backs, and and obviously when you're doing something like that, you got to start close to home. And I think Burnett would be quite the splash for for Cadillac Williams. Again, if there's a position where you feel good about Auburn today, tomorrow, yeah. and into the future, it would be the running back position from a recruiting perspective because of Cadillac and Burnett would probably be the next of many in line to to step into that role. Your thought process when you kind of go into a class thinking, okay, we may take multiple backs here. Do you want a similar build? Do you want kind of like a, a guy that's a bruiser like Fat Burnett? Or, or do you want to – so if you add him, does it change kind of your mindset when you add another back? What's your strategy there? Yeah, I think you can go either way. You can go just, hey, best available, one and two, or try to complement – the two backs. Um, if you bring in a, a Burnett, maybe you go with a three down space guy to compliment him because he's big physical downhill, as you mentioned. Yeah, so right. it really can work either way. And we've seen Auburn work with a, a diverse skill set of backs over the years. So obviously it's going to be new with Hugh Freeze, but um, mm -hmm. that scheme is still going to be dependent on on shuffling through multiple running backs. It's, it's a committee uh, like most of these modern spread offenses you've got to have multiple guys that you can count on as, as both runners and pass protectors and receivers out of the backfield. So that's an area for Burnett to improve upon as, as it is for most high school backs, but you really can't deny his ability when, when the football is in his hands. So not only would it be a big splash positionally, but look an instater, right? I mean, that, that is yeah. really where we're going to start to see in theory, Hugh freeze and Auburn push further and further up the charts, as they say, as, as we get more kind of classic, Auburn, Alabama, Iron Bowl type recruiting battles. Burnett would be a heck of a one to, to start out with. John, there's more and more buzz about this Martavius Collins kid. 247 lists him as an athlete. Looks like he's going to be a tight end. Yeah. Um, 6'3, 241. And I mean, you know, Rome, Georgia kid. Seems like we always have a, a few Rome, Georgia targets when talking about, you know, Auburn recruiting. But this guy seems super athletic, super good with, you know, moving his frame of his size. That's something you love to see for a guy that's going into now his senior season. Yeah, great movement skills, great frame, and a balanced game. I mean, a lot of traits that kind of work, um, especially when you talk about an offense that's going to move the tight end around more than we're probably used to seeing at, at most Auburn uh, you know, offenses. So he could be an H-back, he could be a tight end, he could split out if you need him to and, and develop a little bit as kind of a jumbo wide receiver. All of those things are, are within – the, the skill set here as far as his recruitment though you know basically quiet since that Bama decommitment uh, Auburn was the yeah. last visit before that point and that's when the buzz really began about mid-January so we're a month into the Collins to Auburn trend if you will and there's nothing quite tangible down the line whether it's visits back to Auburn which you would assume would go down if a commitment was to be made or trips elsewhere. So I think the quietness is good here. That silence is golden for Auburn because otherwise you would expect him to be very busy and maybe elongate the process. But if it's quiet 
and still kind of Auburn centric, yeah. you would imagine that something could happen in, in short order um, conversely. So I do think that it's, it's a nice bit of silence on the Collins front and you understand it, right? Kid committed and has decommitted from a big time program. So naturally you got to kind of tiptoe through the process, at least publicly thereafter. And that's what we're getting from Collins, but behind the scenes, I think Auburn's confidence has been rock steady uh, with this potential tight end commitment. So he could very well be next up. And, and I also like Malik Blockton. Wanted to bring him up from Pike Road, okay. young brother of Marcus Harris, who's been quite the Auburn ambassador. You know, all of them are Montgomery natives. And he's another kind of undersized D lineman who has played his way into bigger scholarship offers. Auburn's been on board for quite some time, um, but other schools are starting to jump in. Bama just offered. I think uh, Clemson just offered. So his offer list is beginning to, to bubble up. So that could be a question of, do you you kind of play that out, take those trips, or do you go with what's most familiar? And right now for Blockton, that 100% is, is the Auburn Tigers. So naturally, I look in-state when, when I'm looking to, to predict who might be next up, especially under Hugh Freeze. We've seen that become such a not only priority, but a, an executed priority, something that he's tangibly been able to do uh, with, with his coaching staff. So Malik Blockton's a sleeper no more, definitely a name that all of the SEC schools need to know a little bit more about. Yeah, I mean, a uh, crazy amount of visits or offers for a, for a three-star kid. So yeah, yeah. You, you take that in a heartbeat. He's 6'2", 268. So I mean, he's getting close to, to what his brother is. So you yeah. love that. And he, he's a defensive end slash defensive tackle. Much like his brother, there's a lot of similarities there. Is is their relationship strong, John? Have you heard anything about them wanting to play together? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I don't know how much eligibility Marcus has left, but I think he, in theory, has more than one if he wants it. Right, right. So, I mean, you would never rule something like that out. You know, Marcus is is always back around in Montgomery with the Madhouse crew. Malik is there training as well. So, as far as as I know. Uh, their paths continue to cross pretty consistently um, with, with Marcus back home uh, in the state of Alabama after his his couple of years out there at, at Kansas. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's always back there in the lab. He's kind of known as that. Marcus is known as that gym rat kind of give back to the community, yeah. uh, to the young guys kind of guy anyway. So imagine with, his, you know, bloodlines being, you know, thrown on top of that as an additional layer that's got away heavily with with Malik as he starts to theoretically narrow down the process. Yeah, three good names there. Martavius Collins, Fat Burnett, Malik Blockton, all candidates for who could be the next to commit to the Auburn Tigers. Stay tuned. That'll be fun to see. John, an offensive tackle that I really, really like, put Auburn in his top 10. It's a top 10, kind of a ridiculous thing. Sure, but still, let's talk about this guy in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's sportsbook. It's Locked On Sportsbook. It's the NFL Sportsbook. It's the NBA Sportsbook. We're catching a trend. It needs to be your sportsbook as well. I was just kind of clicking around, seeing if I could spice up a little bit of this read here. It's just looking at Heisman Trophy winner odds for this upcoming season. Of course, Caleb Williams leading the way. That's what happens when you win it and you come back. You are then the favorite to win it again, even though that's only happened once uh, at plus 400 for Caleb Williams, Drake May at plus 1,000, Michael Penix at plus 1,200, Bo Nix at plus 1,200. Boy, would that be a wild, wild ride. But be sure to check out this list as well as all other kind of props, odds, and lines at FanDuel. And look, you've, they've got bonus bets, a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. So if you miss on your first bet, you get those bonus bets back. Check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. John Garcia, our guest, as we talk all things Auburn, Cruton today. Malachi Tolliver putting out his top 10, and Auburn is one of them. And once again, we've joked about this ever since our relationship began. John, ever since you came on the show, if there's an offensive tackle that shows somewhat interest in Auburn, we bring him up here. What are you hearing about Tolliver? Yeah, top 10, obviously. But look, there's there's a handful of schools within that grouping that you just feel more comfortable with. And, and if you go by what the kids do and not so much what they say, 
Auburn's been in this thing since the previous coaching staff. So I think that's Mm -hmm. always a good sign for general familiarity. And then obviously things have changed over the last few months there at Auburn, not only with the personnel, but, you know, the new facilities, all those things. So I do think there's going to be multiple visits here uh, coming up for Tolliver going forward. He's starting to set officials. That's the key here. You got a top 10 but you only could take five official visits. Grab one of the five official visits and see where the chips fall. As far as I can tell, Georgia's getting one of those officials. Auburn looks like the next one that's yeah. going to be set up. So naturally, two of the schools closest to home, he's a Cartersville, Georgia kid, same high school as Trevor Lawrence, if that sounds familiar. Okay. And he's going to start taking officials to those schools as well. So I think he's got a, a clearer idea than a top 10 would otherwise suggest. Normally you're like, yeah, that's a lot of schools, long way to go. But I think it's a little bit more narrow than that. And the five official visits Tolliver chooses to take, I think, will tell that story a little bit more. And right now, it feels like a safe bet that Auburn will grab one of those OVs. And, and he's an important recruit, not only from a big-name program and obviously in the state of Georgia, mm-hmm. which has to continue to be a pipeline, but he's a swing guy. I think he could play left tackle, right tackle, move inside. He can play potentially three to four spots on mm-hmm. your offensive line. And Auburn fans know this about as well as anybody. You need – those guys who could be the glue guys and move around if and when it hits the fan from an injury or depth perspective. So Tolliver going to be more important than maybe his ranking or, or frame would suggest. Yeah. Six, three, 300, but once again, a loaded offer list despite being a three-star. So a lot to like about him and and still a position of need, which is, um, which will, it'll be that way for Is it eternally a position of need. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs offensive linemen, right? So I I guess so. I guess so. But especially with what Hugh Freeze and them are trying to to build there. Jake Thornton, Auburn's offensive line coach, obviously leading the way for his recruitment. John, he's been really impressive to me ever since he stepped foot on, on Auburn's campus being, you know, Hugh Freeze's offensive line coach. Where is he as far as like, oh, okay, if 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 he wants you, he's going to get you. Where is he kind of on that spectrum of like sure thing or or, or not a chance? It, it seems like it's got to be trending to more and more like, eh, Thornton kind of gets the guys that he wants at this point. Yeah, he's he's ascending among offensive line coaches. And I don't think you you take the move from Ole Miss to Auburn without that kind of at your, at your disposal, not only for him, but for Hugh wanting to bring him onto the planes Fair. Uh, Fair. as well. And, you know, he's an early relationships guy. And I think every kind of up and coming recruiter has to be that guy, identify him early and start building that relationship early. So if Auburn ends up winning this Tolliver recruitment in particular, that's one of the few that you can dial back to his Ole Miss days where that relationship was already cultivated. I think Ole Miss even made his top 10, you know, so uh, there's a lot to like uh, about the trajectory of Thornton. Obviously he hit the ground running in a huge way at the end of the 2023 cycle, but really we'll see the full flex in 24 where I think he'll have more of a, I would say more of a, it's an easier sell for him, right? Um, at Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin, it's it's you know it's up and down. The offense right. changes, the personnel changes so much. I think at Auburn, it's going to be a little bit more conventional. Um, and and you could argue that it's you know it's a bigger brand. Uh, certainly, as you recruit, you know more Eastern, you know starting from Auburn and heading Eastern into Georgia and Florida, a little bit more recognizable on the front end. So less of a an identification that you have to put out into the cell, and it's more about the kid and recruiting as opposed to, you know, education. So I do think that's all, you know, part of the reason why Thornton made this move, kind of betting on himself in the process. But he's no doubt an ascending guy. Um, I like I like coaches who identify early and trust that evaluation, regardless mm-hmm. of, like you said, three stars or whatever it might look like from somebody else. If you feel like he's a fit for your scheme, you would know that best. So getting in with these guys early is going to be something we see consistently from Auburn, and we're already seeing it. He's offering kids in 2025, and he's probably going to start – getting in on some 2026s, which is crazy to say out loud in, in 2023. Yeah, and, and also we'll get to see how it worked out through the portal, right? I mean, he went out and got a guy oh, yeah. from Western Kentucky, from Tulane, and East Carolina. Like, yeah, sign me up for uh, for every he bit of that. He all three levels, high school, JUCO, and the portal, right? That's true. Um, including flipping one of, one of his former Ole Miss commitments. I mean, that's another sign mm-hmm. – of somebody trusting you as opposed to the program itself. And that was a Mississippi native on top of it with a a Xavier Miller. So all of those are really high marks and kind of validators for, for Thornton, no doubt. All right, let's stay on the theme of Camary and Franklin or or, of big men. And let's talk about Camary and Franklin. Um, Six, four, 260 pound defensive lineman, Mississippi guy. 
And I mean, he's a five-star kid um, across most places, but Auburn, Auburn getting involved with him. What do you think Auburn's chances are with him? Well, you got to get the first visit in, and that is finally uh, appearing to be the case. Uh, our buddy Andrew Nemec at SB Live uh, reported yesterday that Franklin's going to make his first Auburn visit, which is big, right? Because obviously he's a Mississippi guy. He's the cream of the crop in that state. And look, there's kids in Mississippi know Hugh Freeze. Kids in Mississippi know that that history of, of going out and grabbing big fish. Uh, so I think that's going to be something that is is good for Auburn from a positioning standpoint. And the timing is fine here. It's not like he is very developed with his list. He's a national recruit. He's the whole SEC, the whole ACC, and well beyond already on him. So visits are going to be just kind of the natural next step. I don't think he yeah. makes a list cut or a commitment anytime soon. I think he's going to be like we see with a lot of these big fish in Mississippi, take that thing into the winter months and, and let the chips fall closer to national signing day. And that's from the Auburn perspective, pretty much ideal because otherwise you feel like this is a no brainer for maybe Ole Miss or Mississippi state with their defensive line history uh, with those in-state stars. But I don't think that's the case here with Franklin. I think he's going to take his time and really explore a national offer list. And obviously official visits will become a part of that uh, there as well, but he's got a bunch of visits on deck here going forward. But for Auburn, it will be the first impression, which is important physically because he's already got a relationship with freeze uh, and Garrett. Yeah, right. Okay, let's discuss some offensive guys, including maybe another quarterback. We we spoke with Walker White on the show yesterday. Could he have another quarterback join him in the 2024 class? We will discuss that in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. I want to encourage you to check out our website, auburndaily.com. That's where you can find all of my written work and also encourage you to join the Locked on Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. John Garcia, our guest, talking all things recruiting. Let's talk about Kamari McClellan, quarterback from um, – he's from Penson, goes to Clay Chalkville, 6'1", 175, three-star guy, but starting to get some buzz. John, what are you hearing about him? Yeah, Kamari's a guy who we've known about for three or four years at this point. Late mm -hmm. middle school, started to hear about this Birmingham area quarterback that was a dude. And he would go to all of these seven-on-sevens in camps and win MVPs, like left and right. I think he was last year's um, Atlanta Under Armour quarterback MVP. You know, accurate, uh, smaller guy, you know, 5'11", six-foot, uh, yep. slender type, but accurate, on time, kind of precise in that regard. And he's bounced around a few high schools. So I think that's it's it takes time to establish in that regard. So now he's going to follow up his uh, breakout year at Clay Chalkville with another one with those elite wide receivers around him, um, Mbakwe and, and those guys. So now I think you're going to see him take the next step forward. But he's he's been on radar forever. I think the previous Auburn staff offered him like two years ago at this point. So uh, he was at one of the junior days in January. Not sure if that that Hugh Freeze offer has come back in, but at the same time, not surprised to see Auburn considering taking multiple quarterbacks from the prep ranks. When you do that, Zach, we talked about this at running back. It's much more defined at quarterback. You want to bring in guys on two different trajectories, right? Think yeah. Tua Tingovailoa and Mac Jones in the same class. One of them ready as a freshman, national title, all that. One of them we'll see down the line. McClellan would be the latter comparatively to a, a Walker White. So I do think this is the type of scenario where it would make sense to bring in multiple quarterbacks. Obviously, you're overhauling the entire roster and the philosophy of quarterbacks on this roster that is already portal reliant. So naturally, you need to go and replenish that uh, through the high school ranks uh, or the portal going forward. So not surprised to see Auburn considering multiple quarterbacks. You know, Aaron right. Olin's still out there. There's a bunch of other guys. Uh, that are worth bringing up in, in the class of 24. But McClellan has been a name for quite some time. We just need to see more of it on Friday nights. We got a glimpse last year. I think we'll see a lot more this year. And, and someone's going to take him. You know, West Virginia, Louisville, Mizzou, a couple other schools are are very high on him. Um, and if it was up to McClellan, I think he'd come off the board pretty soon. So it looks like the ball could potentially be in Auburn's court relative to this recruitment. All right. The last guy I want to discuss with you today, John, Parker Livingstone, Tall receiver, 6'3", 185, Texas kid, um, four-star, almost across the board, can do a lot of things when the ball's in the air. Um, where is Auburn in the race for Livingstone's recruitment? 
Yeah, one of the hottest recruits, I would say, in, in the country. In the last Ooh. few weeks and months, his offer list has exploded. You mentioned Texas Kid. Texas is in on, on that one. But a bunch of schools uh, have jumped in there uh, relatively recently, and including Auburn. So uh, same deal there. Next step is, is the visits. And it looks like he's beginning to set up a trip uh, to Auburn. I think it will be for spring practices. So he appears to be uh, pretty wide open, uh, not only to to leaving the 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 Texas footprint, but the SEC footprint. I mean, there's other schools um, coast to coast that feel like they're going to get Livingstone on campus and, and have a shot uh, at this recruitment. Um, and what's interesting about him, I was reading uh, an article yesterday, uh, I believe it was on on three. Hugh Freeze brought up big physical vertical receivers, and he's coached a few of those guys. Uh, That's right. DK Metcalf, AJ Brown. Uh, yeah. When you bring up those kind of names to a young recruit, that's something that's that's going to turn his head in your direction. You're going to get uh, some due diligence at a minimum. So, yeah, look, Auburn is, is trying to change its perception at, at a lot of positions, and wide receiver is one of them. And if you start to win recruiting battles like this, where you're theoretically playing catch up from the jump, it, it starts to to look like a banner moment and other recruits would, would start to recognize it. So get them on campus first, kind of go from there. But like you said, 6'3", runs like a gazelle, great after the catch. I think he he tweeted that he ran like 22 miles an hour. He's a track guy on hmm. top of that. So a, a lot to, to like about him from a production and Friday night standpoint, but obviously in that transition to college ball with what we already see. In your experience, when you've talked to kids like this and you're a, te- you're a school like Auburn, who all- they didn't offer until like earlier this week, <clears throat> and it's a new coach there, how much does the excuse of like, hey, dude, I just got here. Don't hold that against us. Does that work? Does that does oh, that yeah. help you? 100% because okay. you're it's it's either a school i don't know if the previous staff offered him but it's it's something that it's it's like a new job opportunity right you're like well i don't know if i would take that on the surface but i'll take the phone call right so yeah. you you have to at least give it uh the respect that it deserves and i think hugh himself is, look especially with offensive skill guys right you're gonna get that benefit of the doubt um and, and yeah that's something he should be pretty transparent about hey you know we had to finish up 23 we're now zeroed in dialed in heavily on on 24 and you're a new offer and we want to get you to campus and see see where we stand um i think that's going to work this time of year it's not like it's august or september and you're trying to do that it's it's the spring you're not even at the the spring practice window just yet it's actually a dead period right now so i think once once march gets here a lot of recruits are going to flock to the plains and and we're going to see a little bit more uh, tangible victories for Auburn in, in the class of 24. But with with Hugh Freeze, I mean, offensive recruits in general, specifically those skill guys, you, you've you got to feel like you've got a better chance just with the name attachment of, of Hugh to Auburn itself with a lot of these guys, even if you're brand new. But in this case, there is some familiarity based on uh, Hugh's recent history, and that stuff resonates uh, in and of itself. John Garcia, thank you so much for your time as always, my friend. How can people check out everything you've got going on? Yeah, well, with a lot of your colleagues here on, on the Lockdown Network. And, of course, we're still talking ball every day on Twitter. John Garcia underscore JR is where you can find me. Be sure to give them some love, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We will be back tomorrow. little Ferg Friday action. All right here on Locked on Auburn.